consider tabling a couple of items on the agenda. Okay. Um, I, my suggestion would be that we do only the things that absolutely have to be done in the budget. So I'm thinking the Arboretum grant we should decide on in the budget and is the roller chain issue something that's critical? Do you know, Evan or Tom? I do not know. Um, that should be decided on. Um, they, their chains are currently five years old and they broke some side chains and they need to purchase new ones. Um, haven't had a storm since they broke, but it, if, uh, if we have a storm between now and the next meeting, it might not work well for Jason. All right, so I guess I would suggest, I don't think we absolutely have to decide on road weight limits tonight, do we? No. I would suggest that we table that one until the next meeting. Um, the flood. Did we get, sorry, did we get an updated agenda out there, Tom? Yeah. Yep, uh, it was posted Wednesday night uh, physically and on the website Wednesday night, and it went out to distribution Wednesday as well. Okay, because I thought we had already bumped some of these, but... I think, um, you and I spoke Thursday morning, but I, I had to get it out for the 48 hours. Okay. So I just, yeah, we, 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 did, we spoke about bumping them, but it was was already out for distribution. Okay, so we're gonna bump the red limit. Yep, we're not gonna do that for sure. Seven, eight, and 10. Um, the RFP already has approval, so yeah, just go, I agreed. And 10, the appointment policy we don't need to do tonight, yes. Yeah, we need to re review it anyways, so. Okay, so any ad other additions or adjustments? Okie doke, hearing none, we've already looked through invoices and orders. Are there any questions for anybody? None from me. Um, Some of us are still looking. Would, are we interested in approving minutes for December 11th tonight? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have it. Uh, select board issues and concerns. Are there any? Nope. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, plan purchases, roller chains. We just heard about the need for roller chains um, from Tom. Move to approve the plan purchase of roller chains. Do a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Uh, updated financials. Uh, Rosemary, is there anything that we should be explicitly looking at? Can I have one of these? Is there anything that stands out to you? <coughs> stands out to me right now. Okay, same question for Tom. Is there anything that you've seen on the current status report that we should be looking explicitly at? Um, at this time, uh, no. Not that, I, not that I've seen come through. Just there will be at the next meeting discussion of the monthly invoices, just like a tracking of where we are and moving on. But um, that's for next, next meeting. <laughs> next regular meeting? No. Okay. Not next special meeting. We have that yeah, special yeah. meeting. Next. January 8th, I think it is. Mm, I don't think it's January 8th, but we could look at that. I think we do actually have to add that to the end of the agenda. Because <clears throat> it actually is January 1st, but we need to talk about bumping in. And I don't want to get to that later. Okay. Um, board members, any questions on the current budget status report? Okay, um, next, anything else on financials? 
Um, we're skipping road limits. We're skipping the municipal RFP and library repair RFP. Um, Tom and Duncan have that. Uh, we're gonna move on to the Arboretum grant and the MOU that goes along with it. Um, so, C, uh, so Sue is looking for approval to pursue a grant, zero match. We got the details of it, and everyone got the details of it in email. Um, zero match, she talked, I asked her to explain the water, what the water sourcing would look like. She talked about essentially creating a little um, spring type watering hole system. Um, there's a deadline of the end of the year to apply for this grant. Does Sue want authorization to seek the grant? Or does she want the town to <coughs> seek that seek it on the tree board's behalf? She is seek, asking for permission to seek it. Okay. Then I will move to grant Sue permission to uh, pursue this grant. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, <clears throat> I think this was intended in this item, but it's not here. Um, about the MOU, Tom, do you want to just quickly speak on the MOU for the Arboretum also? Can't hear you, you're on mute. So the LCCC, Lamont County Conservation Commission, is going to install a riparian buffer along the Guyon, and this is just an agreement of uh, the town's responsibility and LCCC's responsibility during uh, the next 10 years. Um, that was signed and sent out today um, so that they could submit it with their documents for uh, their funding. Okay, so they need approval. Uh, this is a, it, we already asked the board if anyone had objections to let Tom know. It, there was not a consensus of objection. So, uh, so he signed because the deadline was today. So I think we just need to ratify. Um, would anyone like to make a motion to ratify that? I will. Okay, there's a motion to ratify the MOU Did with LCC. We'll all second so we can discuss. And there's a second and a second. Thank you. Were those comments that I emailed you, Tom, incorporated or just signed as sent? Uh, signed as sent. I didn't feel um, I didn't feel comfortable making changes without multiple, you know, without consensus of your comments. I okay. felt like the majority was okay as was, and that's so I should. That's how I sent it. All right, and this is separate from the grant that we just approved, right? Yeah, two separate, um, both at the Arboretum is the only connection, but two very separate projects. Do you happen to know if in this project they talked with Scott Meyer, our flood zone administrator at all? Um, that I don't know. Um, I know that they spoke with uh, the neighbor and the project is, that is also going to work with the studio center to work on their side of the guy on as well. Um, <laughs> I will reach out to Scott um, right now and make sure that he is aware of the details and if there's any reservations. It's a, it's a memorandum of understanding. It's not a commitment. So we can if Scott has any reservations, I'll make sure that he gets in contact with Peter Danforth to sort those out. My, my sense is, I mean, it's not in the 1987 floodplain, so it doesn't even doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, I think anything that's done down there is in the floodplain. I, I know, but it is. Uh, I don't think so, because I was talking to Scott about my property, so it's not the floodplain, don't worry about it. That's fine. Our rhythm's in the floodplain. It's, sure. it's is it, is it, is it flooded, it twice, flooded twice this year, so. So did my property. It's not in the floodplain. So. Um, 
Well, we don't um, make floodplains relative to your property. I understand uh, that, but it's right across the river from the Arboretum. It's like you can spit over into the Arboretum. But the Arboretum is lower in elevation. Yeah. I, I just don't know the 87 map. That's maybe, the criteria. Maybe there would be a friendly recommendation for them. I don't know. Yeah. But it doesn't involve, it's just plantings, right? There's no structures. Right. Growth, repairing the buffer is just. Right. Changing the way water flows gets me edgy <coughs> now. <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe we can pick that up as a feature discussion point to rework the MOU. Maybe. If it can be reworked in the future, yeah. <coughs> cool. Okay, next up is um, budget. <coughs> um, okay. So, Tom would, well, let's, sorry people in the audience, you do have to use the screen. Rosemary's out of here. So, thank you. Um, thank you. We'll have happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Rosemary. <coughs> do. Go ahead, Tom. Friends, with uh, consideration to anyone present, could we um, address I think Lois Fry was planning on attending. I'm not sure if she's there. Um, Kelly Van Dorn and um, the Dean Locke was going to attend. Could we? Could so, we just so questions? Tom, just so you know, Kelly, Lois, and Lisa are here. Uh, oh, Dean great. is not here. Um, Merry Christmas, Rosemary. If we could Merry Christmas, could we Christmas, tackle their sections first so then they can head home. Yes, definitely. Oh, Lois? You guys want to draw straws? Yeah, <laughs> Lois is the first name that he mentioned, so there all the favoritism, are. but I'm fine with starting with your, yours. Okay. I guess my question is, what, what is it you're looking for from us for tonight? A copy of the proposed next year's budget, or? You might need to speak into the speakers so Tom can hear you too. I guess this my question. Conservation, Lois, right? This is conservation. Oh, conservation. Yep. Okay. And uh, I'm looking for what it is you're looking for from us tonight. I just had the email message that could I come to discuss the budget? It I think just, it was uh, to, to hear your dreams, your aspirations, and your plans for the uh, next fiscal year. Um, what, what are the goals of the Conservation Commission? And just to kind of keep the board apprised of everything. And okay, well, the Conservation Commission is continuing with our property maintenance. Um, when something comes up on a particular property, we, we do our best to get it fixed as soon as possible, and then we do some long-range planning. So within our budget for the last number of years, since we gained all these properties. We've had a category of property maintenance. This year, we know we will be spending all of that. Uh, we have an agreement with the Vermont River Conservancy. They're going to provide the labor and we're just providing the supplies and they're going to do some pretty good fixing up of trails and of the bridge at Journey's End. Um, so at the end of this budget year, I'm pretty sure for the first time in a long time, we will be down to um, having spent everything. Um, we, we had uh, the Gomo Town Forest is in our brush hogging plan, and we had it brush hogged in September. So we won't have to do that for a while, but again, that was, that was um, estimated to be $1,800, and he came in, he had a much bigger machine than um, we had seen in the past, and it came in at $1,000, so, so that was good. So pretty much those are the things that, that we keep working on one at a time, and that's what we're looking for in the future. Um, so my thought was, especially the way things are, that um, our budget has traditionally been $1,500. Now, I'm hoping I'm not the only one that remembers this, but during the budget planning last year, I believe you added 
$500 and put us in at 2000 so that you could um, start to have a town commitment to the Conservation Reserve Fund, which of course is separate from our budget. Yeah, it's the one line underneath it. You're right. So that you're currently so, in for 500 for the reserve fund and 1500 for the general. Oh, good. Your okay. general expenses. Okay. Is that would that be your request? That that would that would be my request. I hadn't I hadn't seen in t the Ju uh, June 30th printout for uh, this past year that the $500 was from this this last year <laughs> uh, was put in. So I just thought I'd better double check on that. Wait, what do you mean? Sorry, you you mean for uh, fiscal year 24 that ends in June this year, you hadn't seen that the $500 had been put in where? The Conservation Reserve Fund. Into the Reserve, reserve Fund, fund yeah. Itself. So I just. It may not have been. May not yet. It may, it may, it may wait till the be end June 30 this. before it actually transfers. OK. But. Um, it's in the budget. Okay, so in the printout from that said that I got for June thirtieth, the conservation reserve fund had only increased by the donation that we had, a fifteen hundred dollar donation. There wasn't an extra five hundred dollars. Right, that would so, be at the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that and, should have the reserve fund should show. An additional five, but we, we may need to talk with Rosemary. No, I don't think that she typically moves them until right. the end of the fiscal year, so it would be in June. Which, well, which is, uh, for looking at prior year's budgets, it, it, um, the additional 500 was to show, the show for the first time at the end of fiscal year 24. In 24, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. there is a bit of a lag there, 18, you know, 12 to 18 month delay, depending on. Yeah. Uh, when that decision was made. Oh, okay. But so it won't show <laughs> until the year end. Before this year. At the end of 2.30. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm happy to hear that you're, you're going to continue that because... Ideally. I, ideally, right. I understand. Um, we did eliminate um, from our budget because we we had had, had carryover and we had things. So we, we took out... Um, any kind of equipment from our budget to get it down to the, the fifteen hundred dollars and have it level five. <clears throat> if we need to cut more, we could probably do it. We can't cut anything too much more this year because we're tight. But for fi yes, this will be starting July one, one. Yep. <clears throat> through the following June thirty. What would and I get you're predicting the future, but what would the, we're at, we've asked everyone to look at cutting 5% so that we can help with the impact that we think our tax payer, our full tax base will feel going into the new year. Would it be impactful? Like what would the impact be to cut 5% so we could do it um, $1,445 rather than $1,500? Fourteen hundred and forty-five rather than no. okay. Fourteen twenty-five. Cutting seventy-five dollars. I think that probably we can do that um, in uh, programs. Okay. So that would be one hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, for, for me, what I have. Okay. Um, if you're okay with us making that adjustment, yeah. it would be great. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Can we? Can we wait until we see where we are on the on the bottom line before we? I want to put make a note cuts? here because I think we need to be really. We've already a month ago we asked Tom to reach out to everyone about reducing. I know. So I think we just and our time is very short at this point, considering where we are today and Christmas and New Year's. But if I look at the if I look at the bottom line of the budget, I'm not seeing a huge amount of additional money that needs to go into the budget. I hear you. We and can put a note. Can, yeah, we can put a note. If we can keep things <clears throat> as they are. I just want to make sure we're asking the question because yep. I think we need to ask the question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Good. Thanks. 
Thank you, Lois. Do you have anything else? No, not for conservation, but Kelly's here for history, so I'm gonna okay. keep her company. <laughs> Perfect. Kelly? Thanks, Lois. I just want to say how exciting it is to hear you're going to keep Journey's End Bridge up. It's one of my kids' favorite uh, crayfish hunting zones uh -huh. down on the bottom there. <laughs> so uh, thanks. Thank you for keeping that up. Do they like the fairy forest? I don't know that we've ever ventured that far. Maybe, uh, maybe you'll have to give us a tour. Okay. <laughs> okay, historical society. <clears throat> Uh, is it historical or library? Oh, Kelly, you're doing both? I'm doing the historical society. Historical. I'm the I treasurer. Have... I'm the treasurer of the historical society. We already have the feedback from Stacy. It was uh, just library. for my clarification. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. Kelly, you have the floor. Um, well, what questions do you have? Um, we, our budget committee met in November and made a budget and then I met with Tom and we went through and cut 5%. And so the budget that you have is what we turned in with our 5% reductions. So what questions do you have? <laughs> so they're actually at a six point, um, a little higher than 6% decrease for fiscal year 24 projections. and a um, 0.8% increase, so zero percent increase for next year. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're in really good shape. They they got their numbers back really fast. Um, they made it really easy for people. Do you guys think? So if if I'm looking at the Tuesday night live revenue. Um, Tom, I know we told you to put uh, basically this, the budgeted amount in there, but I think we should probably use the year to date of 4,065.50 because you aren't going to have, there's, between now and June 30th, there's not going to be any more revenue no. mm -mm. in that line. There is not. So I'm, I'm thinking right. we should use 4,065.50 instead of 6,000 in the estimated year end. Do you feel that 4,500 is a reasonable number <laughs> you know, as that's, income? Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Um, is that just Tuesday Night Live or is that? That's just Tuesday yeah. Night Live. And that yeah. reflects um, having fewer uh, Tuesday Night Live events because we had to cancel uh, because of flooding and the rain. Yeah. and. Everything. Yeah, there's a couple cancellations. Yeah, I think two or three. Yeah. Um, yeah. So three. our income was less than it usually is. Um, so. So I mean that is a it's a fairly fair it's twenty five hundred dollars less than the prior year's budget. So right. that seems seems reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems conservative. Yeah. They did make considerable cuts too on the expense side, mainly because of that loss of revenue. So there was a lot of sacrifices that had to be made in order for that to make up for those cancellations. And that subtitle was on my equipment. Um, is that right, Kelly? Was it yeah. office equipment? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen you selling off any antiquity. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, so those big reductions in admin mm -hmm. and equipment. Equipment. And yeah, we um, we felt like that, that that was really not too much of a sacrifice in the equipment because last year we just got new printer and computer and so we ought to be good for at least three or four years, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Sounds good. And then the acquisitions was cut mm -hmm. down too. Most of our um, money for acquisitions that we've spent over the last few years has been on conservation of books. Mm -hmm. We have quite a few antique books that we've taken and had them um, taken apart and rebound and have the pages conserved. And <laughs> so that's kind of what we've been working on. So um, we'll just hold off. <laughs> I mean, it looks really good, and so thank you for, like, yep. 
making those hard decisions. That's all. Unless anyone else has questions. Okay. Good evening. I'm with you. Thank you for describing your numbers so hard. Yeah, I, I think it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Great. No rain on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we can move on then. Uh, do we Please want go. to wait for Dean? Yeah. We just spoke, um, and I don't know if you saw, we, we got the budget down to uh, a 3.5% increase, um, and I think he, the biggest cut came, um, I'll tell you what we said, and I'm, I'm going to I'll text him while I'm talking. But uh, the largest line, expense line for recreation is ski, ski club and skiing. And what that is, is that covers the first $100 of equipment rentals for, for each child. Um, and so at $8,800, that's 88 kids. And we dropped it down to 6000 so that's 60 kids. And the thought is maybe um, we could make it um, income sensitive or is there a way that we could create a priority list uh, for those first 60 kids? So that way um, we're still taking care of, you know, those who may have the least access to uh, Vermont's probably most iconic sport. Um, so how, how can we maintain that access while maintaining that zero percent increase? Um, getting it down to 6,060 kids um, is really kind of puts us at that zero percent increase. I realize it's three and a half percent, but on such a small number, um, it's not to go much lower. I don't know that it's worth. Tom, do you know um, whether the previous 88 kids, uh, whether we were using that number every year? Yeah, or maybe if you yes. don't. Yeah, yes. Let me, um, no. Let me pull up. In 2022, it was 5,300. In 2023, it was 6,600. Okay. okay. But things have changed a lot. Yeah, over they, the flu past they fluctuate. Few. Yeah, but the programs have changed a lot over the past few years. Yeah, I mean, Lisa, right, that, do you maybe like, know whether the the allotted money for uh, rentals, whether that has been used up in past years? Uh, not usually. Yeah, I think it was, for many years, it was set fairly high, and I know we've been working to bring it down year over year. Um, I think part of that was some of the adjoining communities didn't have programs maybe or, or we had more participants at one point because we were allowing kids in from others but now it's just johnson and um and we usually get 12 ish hundred dollars in scholarship money is also from one of the ski shops that um, supports us so that would be you know that, that would be up to 72 kids and i think the last few years we've had somewhere right around 55 ish people in the program so Thank you. Yeah. Lisa, is that um, subsidy first come, first serve, or needs based? This monies? Yeah. What it's been in the past, you <clears throat> take however many people sign up, and then you split that money between them, and then they owe the difference. Um, so if we got you know more than 60 kids, we'd split it up, and every family would owe just a small amount towards the program. So it, it really, there's no correlation between whether a family not needs in, a subsidy. Not in ski, no. Okay. We do do need-based scholarships in the other <coughs> Um But it would, it would not come, we wouldn't let it come between someone participating and not if we ended up with more students than the 60, we would find a way to get them in. And it, how far does that, I mean, the, if we were doing $100 per kid, uh, how far does that, is that like two times getting rentals or? No, what? so our program is um, currently this year, they all bought snow and they changed it a little bit, but it's eight Sundays 
um, predetermined Sundays with Stowe, and then we have a lease of rental equipment from Pinnacle or um, Power Play, and that's the $99 covers that, and then um, the families pay $65 per participant directly to Stowe now. Okay, that's great. It's great to know. Thank you. So it's directly to Vail that they're paying the 65 bucks? Yeah, they put it all online. Yeah. Um, so, but if we have someone who the $65 represents a barrier, then we have a paper form we fill out and the Rosemary writes a check for, you know, the handful of people that need, need to do it that way. So that's always been true. Like the families have always paid for the program itself. Um, but they paid through Rosemary. The difference is that they're paying direct instead of through the town. And there were, I think there were questions in the meeting minutes last time about the revenue and like what's going on with ski and stuff too. We also did one year where we didn't have everybody pay in at first because Rosemary was taking monies in and then reissuing checks out at the end for equal or two amounts of money essentially because we had enough in the budget to cover the number of people in that year. So we did a year with her permission, we did like a trial year of like, let's just run the program and see it. Um, so that's why it was showing like crazy numbers that year. Do you know where the revenue from the ski shops go? Like, does it? Do you it know comes in. Um, I don't know if we got it last year. I'm not. I'm not sure. The year before, it came as just a twelve hundred dollar check, and it was deposited. I think. I think into ski revenue. Um, or it would have. It would have been ski revenue or a donation. I'm not sure where she put it in. Yeah, that's why I asked. Okay. Um, okay, so that's key. Is there anything else, any other updates that you talked about, Tom? You're on mute if you're talking. You're still on mute and you're still talking. <laughs> tournament um, and to be, to be honest I don't think we ever got to an answer on it but it looks like it was not as lucrative as one slot um, and that it only netted a $40 profit last year um, it has a significant amount of expenses I guess um, I think we're going to uh, after we leave tonight I think I'm going to sit down with him uh, next week we can try to go over and figure out how to make that um, make it happen. I think it's an important event for the community and an important event for the greater community, especially, but, um, and also figure out a way to make it more um, lucrative for Johnson to, to host that tournament. Um, there's also a discussion about um, students who attend Hyde Park, not um, participating in Johnson Athletics anymore, but participating in Hyde Park Athletics, and that may reduce some of our uh, tuition, or I don't know what the word is, but uh, the numbers for people enrolling in recreation. And then also just sort of, excuse me, um, and also trying to sort out how to um, get those numbers up and see if there's a way that we can um, maybe utilize the school system or utilize the work forum or Facebook or some other avenues, just to try to make sure that all families, including new families, know all the opportunities that are out there and try to get some of our numbers higher. Too. <clears throat> so on the line item 296, the ski club, the FY24 budget was 88.50. The year to date is two thousand seven dollars, and we're showing an estimated final again of using the same figure. Lisa, do you do you think that that number of eight thousand eight fifty is a good number to use for our year end estimate, or should that be reduced? That's an expense line. Um, That's an expense line. Yeah. I don't. I don't 
don't know what our year end would be on that. It would be the number, I guess, you'd have to sort sort through the number of people. So we need the, basically we need the bills from the shops. So we need the two shop lease bills and then any of the um, scholarships that we gave in the amount of the $65 that we covered would be the final number of what the expense to us would be. So those would be pretty, should be pretty easy numbers for him to sort out if he gets a, makes a couple calls next week to get more in line with what the actuals are for this year. Just for reference, the actuals for 2021 to 22 winter were 5,300 and 22 to 23 winter was 6,600. So the trend, so line, if our, trend line is up. Well, that's just year over year. I mean, 21, 22 is right after COVID, so. Yeah, participation was up last year, and it's high again this year. It's yeah. high this year. Okay. Yeah, it's nice to have a lot of new years. And do, do you think you've got an, an accurate um, count right now for the season coming up? Yes, because they lock the date, so there's no okay. additions to the program after a certain date. So the number that we have now is that's. That's the program. Okay, so we probably could figure out. Yeah, we could get a pretty accurate number okay. with just the shop bills, two shop bills, and then whatever was paid in at the 65, just so. Tom, is well, that something you can work with Dean on to get a, uh, a, a better handle on? I, I know we told you to use the, <laughs> the previous year's um, number but if we if we expect that it's going to be significantly less than the prior year's budget number yeah it would be good to put a smaller number in that year and estimate yeah i'd love to do that and i'd, I'd love to figure out exactly how to see shops um, charge and bill um i think um my understanding is that johnson pays the first hundred dollars and but all the you know, hundred dollars times tech students. It doesn't leave any room for cents. But yet, every year we have our the actuals doesn't isn't an even number. So I just want to know exactly how much we're paying per per student, and then if there's a way to do it differently, we should investigate that. I think it's ninety nine in the tax of the lease. Right, okay. gear is lease. Gear is equipment is lease yeah. is a taxable item. Yeah, and then they take your credit. So the ski park takes credit cards from all the families, and anything over the ninety-nine dollars plus tax should be charged to the family's credit card. Yeah, so we certainly review the bill, but that's how it should work. Okay. Does this program still um, offer free skiing to parents that volunteer? Chaperones, yes. Chaperone. Yep. That's a, that's a real bonus. How long is the uh, wait list for that? We will take anyone we can get. <laughs> yeah. The more chaperones they have, the more students we can bring. Do you have to be a parent to be a chaperone? We do not. We actually have. All right, don't get see there. Um, there's a like there are a bunch of expenses and lines that I don't think we have like actively have programs for, and we certainly don't have spend for. Like we, we talked about our budget at last night's rec meeting. Yeah. And. Um, I, I found it, as I wrote you guys that letter today, it was like questionable. Like, I was like, what is, like, how, how do we have $500 for baseball? We haven't done anything with baseball yet. And so that's supposed to be like, that's well, that's, to be this like, is not for this year. Uh, this is for July. Like, okay, the thing is that's for this year is the budget for this year ends in FY24. The year to date is from July 1st of 23 through June 30 of 24. Right. And now we're talking about budgeting for July 1 of 24. 24 through, to 25. Yeah. Yeah. But the, we're showing like, we have an expense in baseball, right? For this year because, okay, because yeah. it's July 1st, yeah. But we didn't play baseball after July 1st. That, that should have been like a prior year. It could have been an expense yeah. that was submitted late. Yeah. If it's it would have been invoice to the prior year, that wouldn't it have gone. It depends on like invoice date and that kind of thing. Okay. But yeah, sometimes it would. So that was last year's team and this year thing. So we had like some of that stuff. Rosemary did get us all updated sheets today. So um, I reached out to Tom and Dean to have a meeting to try and just get this like all back in order. And, um, you know, we're showing like 
proposed revenue of 500 for archery. We haven't been able to get an archery instructor in like five years. Right. So it's, it's unlikely we're going to get that amount. Um, so we can just go. So are you proposing line to by line. zero that out? I can't propose and expense side. I can't propose that to you guys here. I can meet with them and Dean and can do it. Like I don't have that. I don't think I have that authority on the rec committee stuff. But um, but we would like to, to review this early next week and get it back to you because it's not representative. I don't think of like an accurate plan for the coming year. I agree. And just so you know, like my, you guys can argue with me all if you'd like, but my view on committees is, especially with committees with budgets, is that you do have empowerment and certainly need to advise to stay within budget. So uh, you definitely have a voice in this. Yeah, no, and I think we, understand that we just we need to get it just get ourselves a little better organized i think is what we realized last night is that it's just not this isn't representing the plan that we're verbalizing to each other which is why you heard my frustration yeah so okay. you'll talk about all of those programs such as archery and adult fitness is carried and swimming and yeah hasn't been money spent so the swimming the swimming one um new programs across what's so old so it, and I don't know if you guys know how this works, but there was at, the, at a time where like, how do we take these off here? And then it was like, if you take them off, they have to be on for like a certain number of years at zero, and then they'll take them off. Three years. But the swimming one is one that we keep, like the college is like, yeah, we'll do it. Oh, we can't do it. Yeah, we'll do it. Oh, we can't do it type of thing. And then it's like, do we pull it off there? Do we leave it on there? Um, so that if suddenly in you know, February of a, of a year, they say, oh, we can do a four-week program. You know, do we have the money sitting in there to do it or not? So um, maybe just some advising on how you'd like to see that plan would, would help us. I mean, from where I'm sitting, you're anticipating no income from it, mm -hmm. so you should anticipate no expense. And if you ended up uh, you know, getting a program through the college, and it self-funded mm -hmm. so all of a sudden you're expecting not to have a program you're expected not to have in income or expense all of a sudden you got five hundred dollars of income and associated expense it would net out am, am i wrong about that no no that's right now we're showing nothing for revenue and some for expense which just sounds but i think it's fair i think it's fair to say that the town has always given a certain amount of tax money to the recreation department without the expectation that it was going to pay for itself. Understood. Um, That's true. Can I just make a comment about that? Because I made a comment on December 11th. I totally agree. And by the way, I like super support youth sports. I very much spend my like non-working hours in youth sports. So I really do support programs around youth sports. I agree that the town has always put money toward youth sports and should continue to a thousand percent. I think the point I was trying to make is that if we're going to spend a lot of money on a salaried person, I think that there should be <coughs> an effort to try to net as close to zero as possible for every program that we support and also make sure that we're still supporting our families who can't afford to play the sports. So, like, I wasn't saying we should be net, we need to be net zero, it's not what I was saying. What I was saying though is that we have somebody hired and we didn't have a hired person for a really, really long time, far before I ever did it, ever did anything with Rec Committee. Um, and I'm not saying it was perfect, and I'm not saying anything needs to be perfect, but what I am saying is that if we're going to spend lots of expense on youth sports, how do we right size growth or attrition or whatever is happening so that we're not creating a bigger gap between revenue and expense? We should be at least staying steady between revenue and expense and hopefully closing the gap a little bit because we are paying a salary. Like we're paying a salary too. I don't. I don't disagree with that. I'm, 
I would only say that I think part of the reason we hired a rec coordinator was we were unable, <laughs> you guys were unable to get volunteers who were willing to <clears throat> spend the time necessary to do what the rec coordinator is now doing. Yep. Um, so I think we, I think we as voters made a commitment to hire somebody to help the rec committee, you know, do those things. And while I, while I totally agree with you that it would be ideal if that rec coordinator could bring additional revenue in, um, I'm, I'm not sure that we're funding the position at a number of hours necessary to do that. But, and I don't mean grounds and maintenance when I say this, make this comment, by the way, that is outside of the budget as far as I'm concerned when it comes to recreation and youth sports. But when our expenses grow, our revenue needs to grow in some way too. And if it means that our registration costs increase to help fill the cost of expenses, then maybe that's what needs to happen. Okay. I don't know, but I think it's just about due diligence really. Yeah, and I think if the if the rec if the, our mission should be to convey that information to the rec committee, and the rec committee should work to make that happen. In my opinion, I don't know how that sits with you, Lisa. But <clears throat> I, my, I get my only question for you is: um, Is it perceived that it's not that we're not trying to do that? Like the. We've changed the fee structures this year for soccer in that Dean had an idea to try this new fee structure to see if it was more accessible. We had a great turnout for soccer. I think he um, came very close to meeting the projected revenue number. Um, and it was a different structure than we've used in the past. And then we, you know, we held the soccer tournament. We're holding the tag sales. We're writing grants. Ooh. If you guys have ideas for how we can do more, we're happy to hear them. Um, but I just, I, I, I just wanted to make sure it was known that like we're we're trying to have a really good rec program, and we're doing it with you know families who are it's hard for them to even get the kids to the sport. Never mind pay for the sport and the cleats and all the stuff that goes along with it. Um, you know, the headline in the newspaper today is like food shelf use is up and the Johnson food shelf use is way up. And so the idea of like raising our fees is only going to, all it's going to do is, is just push out the kids who are already on the edge. Um, and, and I just think that kids in our community, they don't have a lot. So I, I just want your support in like, rec is awesome. And, and I know you do support rec, but I don't doubt that. But just like, let us know what you want to see us do and we'll try and do it. We're happy to work with you and, and just try and foster like a really good rec program. It's, it's the goal of all of us. So we want to teamwork with you guys on, on what you want to see and push, come to our meeting, help us do the budget better. Like we're, we're, we're open to learning. We want to be better. We want it to be sustainable. What's your um, participation trend line over the years? Um, well, it went down in COVID, obviously, yeah. and then um, that, that group is now our fifth, sixth grade group, mm -hmm. and they have the lowest numbers, and then the lower end groups are, are building up again. Or have, have larger numbers. Yeah, so we have um, in third, fourth grade, for example, this year we got like a boys and a girls basketball team for the first time in several years. Mm -hmm. um, so we're starting to see increase again. And yeah, I have no idea how many kids are actually in the elementary school. Which way that is even heading? I think four hundred ish. I have no idea. I think there's four hundred. Unless it like can't possibly be in the elementary school. Is that right? <laughs> well, that's I don't know how many there are in this. There's school. at least two classes per grade. Yeah, there's twenty five ish. Per grade, yeah, for sounds about right. Six, for five grades, and then one grade has fifteen. I'll bet closer to three hundred. Okay. You want a gambling bag? There you go. Uh, right. <coughs> Two hundred and fifty <laughs> percent. Three hundred, but yeah. And then we get ninety, at like ninety-ish in soccer, fifty in ski. There's That's probably seventy-ish. Like I haven't seen the numbers for basketball. Probably seventy-ish for that. 
Um, we're talking Which is about pretty flat, years. honestly, over the years. Like, yeah. if you jump 10 years back, it was about 70. Yeah. Right. And the classroom numbers are this, about the same, like 16-ish kids per class, two classrooms per grade. I hear you about families on the edge. Like, I wear a different hat when I'm on the select board and looking at budget and yeah. budget season. And honestly, my hat in budget season is what is total revenue? What is total expense? What's the gap? And what does that look like back to the trends? Like, I'm very much about trends. What do those trends look like over time? The thing I have a little bit of heart failure over is the gap growing for, for rec over time. So that's the hat I'm wearing when I'm asking pointed questions. Mm -hmm. No, ask them and then like help us solve them too. We're happy to figure it out and work together and learn. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing that in a lot of towns, recreation programs are run through the schools. Yeah. And you see, you see your expense, you know, it's going to cost you one way or the other. It, it, you're either going to pay for it in your school bill or you're going to pay for it through municipal. And uh, perhaps we have more control over it in the municipal budget than we do on the town budget. But in Lamoille schools, and I, even I can talk to work, speak to local. 225. Almost all Lamoille schools are not through the school systems anymore. Most of the rec programs have split from the school over the past 10 years, 15 years. Oh, really? So like Wilka right. still does through the school. Uh, Eden, no, Eden isn't, it's Eden's East Sports, Hyde sports Park now. is its own, has their own groups, Cambridge has their own group, like they have a basketball Are association and they have a soccer association. Are those still all volunteer? Cambridge are all volunteer. <laughs> so they're all in the same boat we're in, in terms of volunteer. Yeah. I've asked the question myself because when the merger of the schools came about, town no longer owns the school, but REC is very heavily dependent on the facility itself. Uh, why it doesn't go through the school, but... Do you have a sense, Beth, of why that trend has happened that way? Yeah, I don't want to talk about it publicly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a sense. Uh, okay, so... Okay. So it sounds like there's a lot of follow-up on the, on the REC side of things. Um, Lisa... What? You're going to try to connect with Tom and Yeah, we team. sent an email today. Um, we what can do, do it over Teams or in person. And, um, Rosemary got us all the updated current, as of today, budget stuff that we needed. Um, and, yeah, so we're just, like, looking looking at it. Reached out Casey, and I talked last week about uh, <coughs> more opportunities because she's just a grant guru, and she knows what's what. Mm -hmm. So we'll try and... Um, we got 500 last year of grants. We'll just try and increase that this year. And, um, we hear what you're saying, and you know, mm -hmm. as taxpayers, we appreciate that your bottom line people. Um, but yeah. Do you foresee facilities maintenance filling that whole $8,500 line? If we um, were keeping stuff up the way we should, it should probably be higher than that. Actually, so that's a it's a pretty low number for um, trying to keep the fields nice and. and the different things we have, but when you say keeping the fields nice, you're talking. Can you about talk about what's in that line? There's yeah. a lot in that line. Um, so we pay for all the portalettes around town out of that line, and that eats the bulk of it up in a city. You can pay for Tuesday Night Lives. Tuesday Night Lives are on Leaping Field, which is a rec recreation controlled or monitored administered property. Maybe um, that should change, but continue. Yeah, I mean it. it it's it all comes out of the town, you know, like. It's $125 a month somewhere in the town. Um, the, the one we don't pay for, which is strange, is the skate park. They pay for their own. Um, and then we do, uh, the last few years, we've been working to add topsoil to Old Mill Park because it's sloughing a little bit. And we've uh, reached out a couple times to Jared, who's on conservation, and he's helped us come up with some plans for trying to stabilize the hillside and stuff that's like in line with conservation goals and that sort of stuff um and then we have a perimeter path that they paid a lot of money one year to get put in and, and really kept ice so we get that hardly rake every season it needs to be like we need to add crushed on and stuff to it again but we don't have any money for that right now um, and that that's pretty much the bulk of it we 
um, have that Alexander, the Alexander building, um, has power now. And so the hope is that the closet that's there will turn into a rec concession and we'll be able to hold like one off Saturdays in the summer on the rail trail and stuff, selling drinks and popsicles and stuff to hopefully raise some funds. And yeah, so I mean, the idea of self supporting we agree with and like, it's just we have to get from here to there. The electric, the electric meter for the Ted Alexander set, Welcome Center, is that included in one of your line items in your budget? That or? I do not know. I don't either. I would expect it probably is. I doubt it. I bet it's just in a general electric. That would be my guess. I don't think it probably costs a whole lot right now because I'm not sure people know that there's lights down there at night that we can turn on. Well, there's the minimal monthly charge. Yeah. Um, 20 something bucks a month. Yeah. So, um, you know, the actual electric <laughs> electricity itself probably doesn't cost much. Yeah. The monthly charge is. So, awesome. Harley raking, field resurfacing, and porta potties. Yeah. And is we bring what in, I heard is in that one. We bring in topsoil. And the playground fall material, does that go in that line too? It does. We had it replaced with Leia's grant money recently, so it's holding at like. Um, a certain amount, and then for like two years we had it donated from NATO. Um, so we have quite a bit of surface protection there right now. I was sometimes asked to like move it around, which we just go to do a work day and we bring shovels down and move it around. But um, yeah. okay, there's a lot in that line here. Um, okay, so I think we should keep moving. Thank you, Lisa, for coming. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, and Okay, let's move to what's next from um, actually I'm gonna let you drive. And if you're talking, you're on mute. Can I make an observation? Is is he trying to speak? No, go for it. So so Tom and I worked on the budget a little bit. One of the things that we worked on was tying the equipment reserve fund sheet into the budget. So I don't know who who's looking at what, but if you look at line 43, <coughs> Revenue Highway Restricted Fund, that now links directly to the uh, reserve fund spreadsheet. Um, line 43, what's that? Yes, it does. Line 43. AL 43. Yeah, so that. Yeah. Okay, so if I'm not logged in, apparently I can't. Are you seeing a figure under AL 43 of 163? Like the link, if the linking's not working without me being logged in, I have no idea what my password is. Oh, hey, uh, Beth, this was happening to Duncan and I. Uh, for some reason, if you close out that, reopen it, and then there's a button that says enable content. Yeah. yeah, I already pushed yeah. it like five times and reopened yeah, it like don't... five times. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't updated? click that for some reason. On the far right of that yes. banner, you just exit out it and it works fine. Um, none okay. of our 365 so accounts seem to be able to log in to that spreadsheet for some reason. It is, um, okay. it's cell oh, J12, J11. So because we, that's the two of them. Is, yes, it's point. the interest in the principal combined. So one of the things I wanted to mention about this, the spreadsheet is that the form that I've got right now, I pushed out the purchase of a backhoe to... Can we, like, I, I hear that you want to get into this, but I really feel like Jason should be here for this discussion, even though... I'm just telling you what we did with a spreadsheet so it, okay. so it shows up the way it I shows up. Just so it links, yep. I so I, I, you know, I don't, we can certainly have a conversation with Jason as to when we think that needs to be done. I, I'm just telling you that for the purpose of the budget right now, I don't, this spreadsheet is not reflecting the purchase of a backhoe. 
And last year it did. Last year we budgeted for the purchase of the backhoe and we didn't buy it. So in essence, we have our fund balance at the end of the year should include the amount that we budgeted for principal and interest for a backhoe that we didn't buy. Okay. So that's. Do you feel it doesn't reflect that? It does. Doesn't. It does not. The, well, our, our current budget is going to reflect an interest in a principal payment based on last year's budget, not what we actually purchased. Duncan, am I correct in thinking that principal and interest is actually a withdrawal from the capital equipment fund? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, where that becomes important, Tom, is if you look at the proposed budget, um, yeah. the, the interest line uh, is, is going to currently reflect the estimated uh, year, the, esti la the budget amount, not the actual amount. So that's, that's why I'm saying we, sh we, need to, we need to reduce that to reflect the fact that we didn't pay that interest or principal. Yeah, what I, what I, want, I was making a point for everyone to understand that that line that Duncan is now tying to the Highway Reserve Fund balance is really a reduction of our capital equipment reserve. That, it's, that we're not at, and so that money in is budgeted to come out of a different place. So it's a yeah, reduction it comes out of, of a reserve fund. fund. Yes. Correct. Yeah, so, so line item 183, interest on loan payments, estimated year end, um, is showing 24,174.94, which is the budgeted amount, which included the purchase of the backhoe. So that line, that line item 20, the estimated year end final 24,174 should be reduced by the amount of the interest on the backhoe. Interest and principal, you said. Interest and principal. And the principal will be down under the actual expenses. 404 should be reduced as well, then. Yes. If you're looking at, are you looking at the, uh, the principal amount? Yeah, principal yeah. amount. Yeah, so that number needs to be reduced by the principal amount of the backhoe. Yeah. To give us an accurate figure of what our year end is going to be. And then we need to make a decision at some point when we're going to buy the backhoe. The sheet that I'm showing you right now doesn't have it in for, for FY25. And I think it, it still could be ordered now and purchased within this fiscal year. So we, I mean, that's the decision the board could make tonight. And if you want to, or with Jason, sorry, not tonight. Um, and if you want to buy that backhoe for the end of fiscal year 24, there's still time, or we make the decision not to do it and then reduce those lines. Those are all decisions that we need to make. I think we heard from Jason that he doesn't think we should replace it this year in the current time of year. I so, but. Yeah. And I think you're optimistic that we could actually order and receive a backup. Okay, so what, <coughs> what other topics did we have for tonight around the budget? I heard about salary changes and benefits. Is that all up to date? Sal salary and benefits have been uh, updated. Um, In this spreadsheet that we have? Yep, both health and dental. And so now they link back to the health insurance tab and the dental tab. And so those moving forward from this year headed out, um, it's going to be creating the budget. It's going to be a lot faster now that those are all linked in and working. And so salaries are in for highway, library, and office, and uh, health and dental are in. Uh, the only piece I did not check, and maybe Duncan already did, is the short uh, long-term life, the uh, disability insurance. Like, uh, I, I don't have that number, Tom. That's one we'll have to get probably from Roseberry. But it's okay. probably oh. not greatly different than the number that was, you know, from a couple of years ago, even. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but that one should be updated. The long-term disability and the unemployment insurance probably needs to be updated. That tool was not updated since 2021, and health insurance was uh, a little quirky. We're not really sure what happened there, but we had cleaned it up. Um, and Tom, you had a comment earlier that the highway salaries that you wanted to double check on years of service to see if that changed anybody's pay rate. Is that was, have you done that That's already? Right. Or? Yeah, I don't know if you uh, heard me this morning when you and I were meeting about the RFP. I had a moment of like, oh, Rosemary's not there. That's that's what that moment of frustration was a realization that I couldn't call her to get those numbers for tonight because um, we went past noon. So I have to check on years of service and then apply it to um, the grid that came with their contract with the union and just make sure those numbers are right. Um, they have the right increase. Um, it has been applied to their salary, edge, but they might not be in the right tier for skills and to service. So again, that number probably won't change a huge amount, but it could change it needs to be if somebody gets a, gets a different tier level, right? Yeah. If you are looking at the uh, salary budget, you'll see this year for the first time, I, um, I added a new column. So instead of budgeting the whole year, Wait, what do you mean? Um, you, in the tab? You'd be swallowing an increase yeah. in the second six months. I added um, the fiscal year is now broken into the first six months at a known rate, and now a second six Tom, months. Tom, can you hold on one second, please, so we can catch up? I just want to make sure that I'm following. I'm not seeing that. I do. Not so, can you tab? start over? Oh, You're in the estimated salaries. I do go that way. I don't know. Yeah. So oh, that. <laughs> where is it? Uh, so do you see where there's red six point four percent? Yes. It's the so that I don't know. is a column L, which yep. is a new column. It's oh, yeah, there it is. at three oh, percent. Yeah. Okay. He's talking about gotcha. it. And so in the past we budgeted the entire year at one percentage. And you kind of swallow that increase for the second six months. Um, now, moving forward, I created this because of the decision to use the previous year's uh, CPI increase. We can now budget the entire year accurately. Can you and do so me a favor? Something. I, I got gotcha. you. That's perfect. Can you put a comment on these or a label or something so that when we hover over them, we know what they are? And I, yeah. just to uh, bring everything together, I, I think when we talked with the village at the joint meeting, we talked about setting a percent increase together. I see that you're carrying 3% for the second six months, and I'm okay with that. Uh, but going on CPIU for Northeast, it's 2.5% is the actual number that's released. You can correct No, it's really. So uh, we can change that right now. If we change the percentage number, it will automatically change all of the salary adjustments too. Oh, so, really? Yeah, if you change the 2.5, if you change the three to 2.5 in oh, no, cell okay. L1, it, it, it transmits <coughs> through all the salaries. And that's already linked to the proposed budget. Yes, yes. So any okay. change, that's the beauty of these sort of cool. Back spreadsheets or sheets. Kind of what is, I wanted a month ago. Yeah, they all. Yes, it was broken. Yeah. But now that, that's what Duncan and I spent all that time on. Is now it's fixed. So next year we just punch in two numbers and we boom, budget's done. Like. So. Well, next year you're gonna drag a number over. But right. Yeah. yeah, but there's a little bit of tinkering that has to be done. But but it's relative. Once the spreadsheet is set up, yeah. basically. How long is your contract for? So maybe uh, we'll probably see this is the entered into the second year. Yeah. So next January they'll be entered into the third year, and it will be done half following January. So the negotiations will yeah probably start next, next year. Yeah, basically. 
Uh, but I guess we could decide that. Are you okay with reaching out to Ken as the chair to chair to say that that's what we're planning on? Yeah, sure. Somebody the want to the two point five or the three? Two point five is the release number I found. I From what date? Um, just the twenty twenty three uh, November twelve month rolling average CPIU uh, northeastern region. Or wait, Mid Atlantic. It was supposed to be northeast. Oh, no, just, yeah. I, I typed in northeast and I clicked on the first link and that is my fault. Great. I think my social security said I was going to get a 2.5% increase next year. Well, this is <laughs> kind of why I want somebody to double check it. Northeast region. Okay. Northeast Region CPIU 12 month rolling average is still 2.5 for the month of November. Yeah. But I would All right, well, let's put it 2.5 and. Let's put in. No, I'm checking it. I'm going to it there. It's popping right up. Okay. I'm comfortable with budgeting 2.5. And we should either ask. Tom to talk to Eric, or if you want to talk to Ken and tell him that's what we're budgeting. They can get the number like in six place. Huh? Put it, in, put it in and press enter and just watch it. Watch I did. Magic it's a beautiful thing. It's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get awful happy with negative numbers. <laughs> uh, but that is very helpful having that all prepared. Uh, it actually makes things look better than the budget. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, last year, I forgot about this, but last year we budgeted for a fifth employee. Yeah, and the highway, but last right. year, so where I'm going with this, where is office salaries? I'm trying to find it here. It's under select board expenses, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's just above that. Just above there? Uh, it's general government salaries and benefits. Okay. <clears throat> it's line. So unless I'm wrong. One thirty four. Which I can be wrong. Um, are we building in the amount for a community economic development coordinator? Because that alone should be a larger delta than what is in the sheet. So the sheet right now has the CEDS and the assessor built into the entire spreadsheet, not separated out. So ultimately, that's a question. Gotcha. So we're, we're doing that line as only a delta of 30,000 because it's only 85% of their, of their additional salaries, Correct. right? And the other 15 yeah. is in holiday sick and vacation. Correct. So if you go back to that estimated sheet, estimated salary sheet, we, we still have the rec coordinator in there. We have economic development coordinator yeah. in there and we have the assessor in there and the assessors in at our percent of the cost. Our percent of what? The, the assessor is, so we're responsible for 33.3% of 24 hours on the assessor. Ah, okay. So that's why his is in at a pretty low low total cost. I, I, I'm, a, I'm thinking that's the way we should do it. Do you guys disagree with that? That we should only show our portion of the cost as opposed why to... Would we, why would we not? As opposed to the full cost? Yeah, I mean, if we show the full cost, then we'd have to show a reimbursement yeah. as revenue from... That's what we should be doing. That's actually we what's probably, happening. We're actually paying out the full cost. We will be. Um, and yeah. so we should be bringing revenue in on a different hey, line. Um, but, uh, hey, hey, Duncan. Yeah. For, to your point, I think right now, that's just the way it's set up, um, we should keep it that way. What way? And 
Uh, the way it is shown now. Which, which, which is? On, which is just what we're going to, the net difference. Um, until we get the bottom line, because Rosemary is going to have to create accounts to do it the other way. And um, so, but as it's shown now, we can theoretically move forward without waiting on Rosemary's accounts. But we don't have to use, like, this is Excel. At, at so the I, end, our expense is going to be our obligation. Yeah, I agree. I think we need to insert a line for that revenue. And even if there's not a GL code against it, it doesn't, it's okay. We can get a GL code later. But I think we need to, we should have probably have multiple GL codes actually to show the salary and the benefit. And revenue from each. Well, we should probably have salary and one line for salary and one line for benefits, just a flat benefits of revenue coming in because we do need to account for so Duncan's point, we have that liability of paying for all of that for the position. So that all of that expense should be part of what we're budgeting. And we also should be accounting for that revenue that's coming in, that's offsetting it. Um, but I don't think we need a GL code to do that. Yeah, now. I agree with, I agree with that. Just for the sake of tracking. If we are going to uh, run those accounts like that, then we probably, although he's a legal employee, we should probably account for him as a contracted employee just to make it easier to see the difference of expense versus revenue. Because right now, we're putting his salaries into... Yeah. Sorry, Tom. I was just like making a comment. I just want to see all of our salaries broken out. Because I could argue the same thing for a whole bunch of our salaries. But I'd like to see them as separate lines from the general salary bucket. I mean, I am understanding of carrying the full liability under salaries, but showing the revenue under revenue. It does make it more confusing for a future board. They won't be a problem. It's so hard to, to dissect it out to show the actual cost of the assessor if you don't have two clean counts to balance. Yeah. I mean, but, I'm, for, I'm all for it. Mean, Rosemary, yeah. Rosemary can set up a chart of accounts. We, we might need to coordinate with her to figure out what the account number is going to be. But if we right. tell her to set up an account for, um, you know, revenue, I mean, revenue for salaries, revenue for benefits. That's not that hard for her to do. So, just show it under assessor's contract and services and then show it <coughs> under revenue as. But it's not contracted it's not, services. But that's a line. Can we rename lines? You, well, we, we can do whatever we want in the budget, and then Rosemary has to correlate the change to the chart of accounts or chart of accounts. Um, I, I'm really reluctant to call it contracted services or contracted salary because it's not. He is literally an employee of the town of Johnson yep. and receives all the benefits which otherwise accrue to any other employee. And I think it gets us In my prior day. role, I would, I would handle this as assessor employee expense in an assessor employee revenue. And just when you set up payroll, instead of having it come out of that salary line, you have it come out of that employee expense. And the same for the benefits too, is just you would either do a manual GL entry or you would set up a, a separate AP for that portion um, of the benefits. So it'd be two checks to represent, but they would all come out of the same line it would still fall under the employee piece. And you would have a set another expense line for assessor, but this is something that Rosemary should do and we shouldn't figure out. And well, she should tell we, us. Well, but we own the budget. So like we need to work together with Rosemary on it because we need to be able to, like we're accountable for the budget as a select board. 
So we need to be able to, to see and speak for the things that we need to be able to see and speak for. And I'm uh, reluctant to do it as, pay, as, as, as an AP account also, because right. payroll. Oh, oh, sorry, only benefit would be AP, only benefits. Uh, the rest would be through payroll. You know, pay, salary would be through payroll, but hey. That's but I don't care what, like, point. okay, but that's the cash flow side of it. Budget fl budget flow side of it, like what we need to see in the budgeting process, I think is we need to see that expense, the salary expense. Personally, I don't care where the benefit expense falls. I think that it should just fall into the regular benefit buckets that it are is for right everyone. Now. It is right now. I think it should stay that way. I just think the salary should be separated out. And then for um, reimbursement for that uh, revenue side, I think we need to put, well, we probably need to have salary and other benefits revenue, like just a generic other benefits revenue, yeah. separate from salary. Is it, just as like a action item, is it possible to draft an email of your wishes, and then that way Rosemary can take it and make put it into reality. Sure. I mean, do you all do you all agree? Like, do you think that's what it should look like, budget wise? Yeah, I agree. I think the easiest thing, honestly, is to budget the actual amount of hours we're going to be responsible for paying for, and not deal with the rest of it. But from a absolute uh, transparency standpoint, you are right. Budgeting the full salary <coughs> under salaries and then having line items coming in for revenue to offset that is probably the right way to do it, ultimately. Okay. I think auditing-wise, we need to be able to easily speak to it. And again, there's a whole back end side of it, but from a select board position, yeah, I don't think we should hide the two and put a net in. We don't put net in for, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if we put net in for anything else. Most of the things in our budget do not have a net rep, uh, value represented. Yeah. So I don't think that's going to be that hard for Rosemary to do. Um, I think we could certainly send her an email or, or make a request that we add those two line items. Yep, um, okay. And she can give us, you know, it's a simple, it's a simple matter to add a chart of account number and then we can add that to the budget. I think the value of having her chart of accounts reflect what our budget reflects mm -hmm. is that come budget time, Tom can do a printout and his printout will equal our, the line items in our budget. Oh, I, I totally get it. I'm yeah. just saying timing wise, like yeah. we can throw it in the spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll draft that as soon as I'm done drafting this other thing. Okay, what else do we need to cover? If we look at general budget, let's start at the top really quickly and just make sure we haven't missed anything. Revenue, tax related, we'll get to later. Fees, licenses, fines. I assume that no one has issue. There's nothing red or yellow there. State and federal section. There's a couple of blue. Why are these blue? Why is, um, are, yep, go ahead. Those are blue because um, I want to make sure that we have two grants. One we know we actually just submitted on the 20th. A, that should be it. I mean, that number is going to go in there. So those are action items for me that I need to think. We have the better roads numbers, 28 was an change. And then we also, um, there's going to be a grant and aid, and I, would, I just want to reach out to Alan May at the state and just say, hey, is there any idea? Or, or I like over at LCPC, just get a, a ballpark number so we, we know we can make that a little closer than what it is. I put 23 in, I, I now know it's going to be a little higher, but it's going to be um, even higher still. Do we have matching revenue? I mean, or sorry, matching expense. Yeah, you'll see that that's also highlighted. 
on, on the back side of that when we get to it. Okay. And are, are both of those known grants, Tom? Uh, so grants and aid has not yet been established, but I can probably get a guess, a close guess. It's usually between 15 and 25,000. Um, if they don't have that number yet, I'm going to put 15, which is going to, that number is going to be at a minimum 45,000. I'm going to make it at 45 right now. All right. Um, but I think the question is, do we know where we're going to get, that we're going to get the award? Well, we know we're going to get better roads. I guess we, we don't know, you know, I've never seen, I've never heard of somebody not getting it. Um, so I guess Tom, we could keep it at why. zero until the award comes in. Tom. I'm going to go way off track. This is killing me. Do you have to do um, that right now since we're not no, talking about highway? No, no, we don't. It's just more of a wide angle budget item. Wide angle budget. I was wondering why it looks like we're down $300,000 in expense, but it's yeah. because the subtotal for summer road maintenance is not an expense. That's why. I was Continue. wondering that too. Continue. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So <coughs> I wonder if we even should put. So we talked to Casey about this extensively last year. <laughs> about, if, you, if we don't if know, we don't know then I get it. Don't put it in. So I think we should probably follow suit. We can keep notes in, but we probably shouldn't put an amount in if we don't know we're going to get it. On both the spend okay. and expense. On both the revenue and expense. So state grants, highway, make zero? Yeah, if we don't know that we're going to get something. If we don't have a grant in hand, I would say we shouldn't budget for it. Okay. We budget for pilot, though, if we have. Well, pilot, we know we're going pilot, to. Pilot's pretty certain we know we're going to get that every year. Although grant, there was grants a conversation are last year. Huh? There was the conversation last year yeah. Yeah. about the state talking about being tight. Last year, that was before the flood. Which is why we usually budget a little bit less than. I think we should be a little bit think. more conservative on the well, government side. I, I just, the, you know, the impact of that twenty-seven thousand dollar reduction in yeah. revenue because the grant's not in hand. Um, yeah. It's going to be <laughs> increasing. It should have a net zero yeah. if we have an expense for the same amount. Because we should take um, the expense out too. So that's going to lower that construction line under highway when, when we get there. Yep. So back to the pilot discussion. So yeah, we should take it out <laughs> both places, Tom. And you can have comments on it in both places, but just not the dollars in the cell. Um, but back to that pilot discussion. So, oops, I just changed it. Yeah, upon revenue, right? Upon revenue, line 32. So right now we're <coughs> budgeting 23,000. Last year we budgeted 25. We had a more firm understanding of what we thought the number was going to be, though, because our, our actual match to the budget. Oh, sorry. No we budgeted 23. We budgeted, we budgeted 23, 23, yeah. And we got 25. Consistent. got right. 25. Yeah, yeah. So we still want to stick with the 23. Yeah? Yes. I think so. Okay. And so that 23 can just not be blue, I think. Unless you have something else you can follow up on. Do we want to show the pilot payment as 475? I'm much happier with 450. Up two lines from where you are. You were talking about the A&R pilot, I'm talking about the other pilot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because when Rich and Dan came last year, mm -hmm. they said we could budget last year, but they weren't sure what finance would look like in the future year. So are you thinking the 475 is too low or too high? I would rather keep it at 450 um, because of the warning that we got last year, but maybe some follow-up with uh, Rich would be a good idea.
looking at prior years. Yeah, it looks like it almost always goes over the estimated amount. Historically, other boards. I know we're a little conservative on income, also on spending. It ends up being a surplus in like all the taxpayers. Money. I thought historically we under underestimated by more than twenty five thousand. What do you mean? Meaning you're saying, like on that line alone? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just about. It's not a bad idea. It's just I know we also want to be as accurate as possible. But yeah, well, accuracy is important. When we don't really know. Conservative. They, the state could cut that. That that is funded through the local options tax that right. every other town does. So right. if people don't spend money, the state's not going to yeah, make up that. So difference. if more towns adopt a local option tax, which I think is what happened in the last couple of years, is more towns have adopted a local option tax, so the the fund gets bigger because more people they're collecting more of the uh, the state gets a portion of the local option tax, and that's what funds pilot right. basically. But you know as well as I do, in reality, somebody in the appropriations committee can absolutely they could say yeah, property sorry. transfer tax is supposed to go for yeah. conservation stuff too. It goes all right the now. They would get. An enormous amount of pushback if they cut the pilot amount to towns, but well, but the big thing is, is there's not there's really like a dozen towns that it really matters. We're one of them, and we're one of them. Yeah. So if they did, now you're also relying on people spending money, which seems to be consistent. But if you fully plan on bringing in. Uh, Five hundred thousand dollars, and it's really more closer to four fifty. Right. Then we're running a deficit. Maybe we get a mud season where we spend seventy thousand dollars on gravel. Right at the end of the fiscal year, maybe we get a flood. There's a lot more to lose by the, overestimating the, than the flood was fun. Yeah. Right. So let's. Tech <clears throat> has been sent to Rich and Dan. Rich will answer. Dan will. Could we, uh, would we feel comfortable going with 460 instead of 450? Sure. Did you get that, Tom? So this is for the 5650 pilot payment. Could I have line 30? 3, yeah. So I changed the 475 to 460. So that means we're, we're lowering. Revenue. It yes. does. We're going the wrong way. <laughs> Guys, I, I, so, and you're sure pilot's going to go down? No. 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 We're it's, sure it's, that we want to be safe. The trend has always been uh, we've underestimated. But, but that's the safe and, thing to do. Well, and, and the other important yes. factor is that we that were told that last point. year that they were closely looking at pilot funds last year. Um, and that they thought last year budgeting would be okay. They weren't so sure about this year's budgeting. Because, so, and you know, this is all linked to the college and all things college play into this conversation. And they're all about reducing expenses for anything associated with the college system, which is why we want to be so safe. I, just so we're all on the same page, the last two decisions, I've increased the amount to be raised in taxes by forty thousand yep. oh, dollars. Out of Evan's salary. Just by fixing that link down below I talked about earlier, I increased it by three hundred thousand. I really appreciate that. <laughs> so I mean like yeah, I I do like talking about finite numbers, but I yes, um, we understand that, Tom. Would you would it be okay to reach out? make sure to see see where that's at uh, I'm, I'm already that's what i was just saying i already texted rich and dan i will let you know when they respond so this this subtotal didn't include summer roads is that what you're saying yeah let's just talk about what you were talking about Evan. let's go there i didn't let's go there what line uh well, now you, you 
you're gonna even find it, right? Yeah. So, Summer Roads line number 384, proposed total Oops, is, subtotal. proposed subtotal is, oh, well, there's nothing zero. there. I know, it's zero, right? Yeah, so if you, drag, if you drag the total over, just drag it over, or yeah, you can do it yourself. Yeah, You're smart like that. If you do that, you'll add about $300,000. Facebook, keep dragging. Huh? Keep dragging, bro. Well, I mean, it wasn't It wasn't in, that's why earlier when I said it, it's a high level item because, you know, looking at the budget that was sent out, we were looking great, you know, a deduction in what's been raised by taxes. And one change went from negative 4% to, what's that, plus nine now? I'm busy looking at the other formulas. That was a quick one. <clears throat> but it's not like a high level one. All the other numbers in the category look fine. <laughs> but it changed. <laughs> it had quite an impact on the total. Yeah. Total proposed. Increase. But it's still only 1.3% total increase. Where are you getting that? Uh, right here. Oops. And I, I don't know if that formula is correct, but AL433 minus 8H. That's right. No, it's not. AH is. 23 actuals. That's not right. Stop. It needs to be. Needs Sorry, to be, Tom, we're just looking at like the. Yeah, I. Yeah, I just want to give you a heads up. I got a hard stop in about four minutes. Perfect. Yeah. We do too. Beth says we do too. Is that vibes? AI okay, what else do we need to know from you while, before your four minute hard stop? So, um, are any change? So, that's looking better. There's $30,000 coming in from uh, the buildings and equipment reserve fund. Um, I'm that assuming that's going to be spent on the clock tower. Is that correct at the municipal building? That's a large conversation piece that we usually have. Um, does the clock tower need to be done? Yes. Uh, the building itself around the clock needs to be done, that's for sure. Yeah, so we probably need to have that conversation with the village to make sure that they're budgeting properly as well, right? Wrong? I mean, people can disagree. <coughs> I'm looking for okay. people. I agree. Well, they're 50% of it. Right? Yep. Yeah, they'll expect them to pay 50% of the cost, right? Yeah. And they're broke. Right? Well, I mean, how many times we hear that? Maybe we have to carry the cost to get reimbursed. I don't know. Like, yeah. The board can decide what it wants to do, yeah. but um, it's at least a conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. Even tearing it down, they'll still have to pay 50% of the cost. I like going back to the idea of that <clears throat> rented space. Me too. <laughs> Maybe, and you know, they might be open to that. Has yeah. anybody floated it by then? Well, I floated it by them at one of the meetings, and Ken said we would consider that. Yeah. To your to your point, Tom, or, or I'm not sure who brought it up, but one thing that is not in there is any, any improvements, construction, whatever, to the historical society buildings. Oh, that's coming. Wait. What do you mean? Oh, down on the expense, the historical uh, Holcomb House make, building maintenance, I think it's the name of the line. Oh, what do you mean it's coming? Oh, like we're not to that section of the budget. Oh, let's go quick. So. So you've got $7,000 in there right now, is that what you're 
referring to that That's line what's in item? There now, um, a conversation, probably not for tonight, is looking at that list uh, that came from the Historical Society and Mary Jean and just prioritizing it and then budgeting one or two of those priorities uh, based on that line and maybe increasing a little bit to get both of them done or keeping it as is, um, but just aligning that amount to the priorities um, that we have. I would argue that's not maintenance, it's capital, but so it might want to just drop down a line. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think it's a matter of, either way, as long as we're addressing it, it's awesome. Yeah. But my, my question is where, do we bring some revenue in to offset that expense? I mean, right now we have $7,000 in the building expense that's not being used, is that, I don't know. Yeah, but. Nor is it being offset by a revenue. No, no, my, my point is, uh, we could, we have some big problems over there. We could tackle some of them this spring under the current fiscal year. We've only spent 1700 to date. And then we could probably tackle one next year without increasing the budget. Um, but just putting a plan in place or um, we want to look at this as a capital expense and trying to create a revenue from that. I just want to make sure that when we're looking at building repair and building maintenance, I agree with capital expense. We should be pulling from reserves at the capital expense when possible. We should also be looking for grant money if whenever possible for historical historic buildings. But that being said, um, I just want to make sure that we're looking at all of our building maintenance and repair holistically and the Holcomb House is part of that so that we can prioritize everything overall. I mean, I, I, I agree Beth. it's just, those are, those are items that have been neglected and they need, a few of them need immediate attention or it's just going to continue deteriorating the building. It's going to cost um, more in the long run. And the same is to be said about the clock tower at the municipal building. Both of those in the state they are will only continue to increase um, and get worse. You know, and they're going to get more expensive and they're just going to get become bigger and bigger problems for us to deal with down the road. So, Tom, if I understand what you're saying, you're saying that we in the current year that we're in, we have 7,000 budget and we haven't spent hardly any of it. So there's so we tap potentially 7,000 there and you're proposing to add 7,000 in the 25 budget. Or and then not add, having a conversation continue. about having a 14, you know, say a $10,000 project right around the fiscal year so we can put that money together and nail off two or three items right around June, July, um, you know, so that then we'll have a total of $14,000 for a bigger project crossing two fiscal years rather than budgeting a large amount. You know, now we have no increase to taxes, but we get the most amount of work done. So if you go, if you go right up, right where we are, line 238 building capital expense, in 24, we budgeted 45,000. To date, we spent nothing, if that's accurate. And we're proposing to spend 45 as a final. So that's, if I remember correctly, I may be remembering this wrong, but I think when we budgeted last year, we considered putting some money in for some of those historical society. I remember the clock tower being a bigger conversation. I don't remember the historical society being part of that, but I don't know. I'm not saying they can't be. Yeah. yeah. So. The porch roof on the historical society. I remember. That we talked about it a lot. Issue. Yeah. We talked about it a lot. I don't know that we budgeted for it or not, but I guess my point is this, the same thing that you're talking about, Tom, for the $7,000 that's budgeted also applies to the $45,000 up above for capital expense. So maybe we have enough money 
to fix some of these things within the current fiscal year budget? Oh, that would be awesome. That is, that's music. I, I don't know if they have that much money in this year's budget. In reserve, he said. Well, we, uh, we were supposed is, to be that bringing that in out of reserve. Know. Yeah, but I can't even see what the reserve fund balance is. And uh, because... Do you know what it uh, is? You know what's interesting? So you were, you were going to spend 45000 use $30,000 of reserves for a net increase of $15,000 in fiscal year 24. So if we spend 30000 up to thirty thousand and twenty four, we would have, we would not increase. We would that would leave us with a fifteen thousand um, dollar amount of unexpended funds that was raised in taxes at the end of this year. So that's a pretty cool idea, Duncan. As long as we kept those expenses under thirty thousand, um, that's a lot a lot bigger chunk of change to work with. Were we proposing to put fifteen in the in the capital fund of the reserve of the surplus? What from last year? Yeah, it was like sixteen thousand and change because we did percentages last year, not values. Yeah. I I think it was. Oh, here let me tell you. Last year's proposed was buildings and grounds at twenty percent, which should have been sixteen thousand fifty seven dollars. Going in. So that could be the delta between the 30 and the 45 that Tom was just talking about. Yeah. In the interest of uh, respecting Tom's heart out, which we're now six minutes past, uh, is there anything else we need Tom for? We probably don't. The only thing I would, was going to mention at some point, Tom, was um, when you and I worked on the health insurance spreadsheet, we were using, so we split it up between um, six months in six months in the, we know what the first six months is going to be. We estimated, what did we use? 11% Tom for 11, the yeah. second half of the year. For health insurance. For health insurance. So if you guys are comfortable, I mean the health insurance numbers that are in the main budget right now include the current year known jump and an estimate of 11% increase for the next six months. Makes sense to me. Seems about on target for a three-year rolling average, <clears throat> although we had a, a weird year in there. Yeah. So, I mean, we can play with that 11% number, but that's, that's the number that's currently in there that's generating <clears throat> the anticipated expense yeah. for health insurance. Okay, have a good night. Merry Christmas, Tom. Fun. Enjoy the holiday. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Bye. So dumb. Feel better. Rich. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. Which fund is building the grounds? Uh. I'm seeing like emergency management, oh, conservation, uh, reserve. What, what for, tab are you looking at? Uh, T report C O H. T report C O H. Should be cash on hand value. You don't see something that says buildings and grounds? Uh, reserve funds are emergency management reserve fund. <coughs> cash on hand reserved for conservation. Is the 31, line 31. Buildings and grounds? No, line 31 was proposed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. It is not a balance. So I've got a balance as of 2023. June Wait, buildings and grounds fund right here. It's line 53. And it's 102. And it's $16,000. No, Rose, that's what we actually injected. Rosemary told me that this sheet that she printed out does not include the proposed contributions really? okay. to the sheet. Okay. That's that's what she told me. So be at almost one twenty. Uh, probably, yeah. Because I asked about the capital equipment fund. She told me we needed to add the twelve thousand forty three mm -hmm. that we have over over here yep. um, to that, which is where I came up with the two fifty three nine forty three. 
Hmm. I'm a little worried that building new ground is not part of this, to your point. What's that? Yeah. Well, in the tab. I'm worried that it's right? not There's included. a cash on hand. And it shows all these other reserve funds, but it doesn't show buildings and grounds. And that's last year's though? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, it would have given me the beginning balance. It, right. It would, should give me exactly what you have. Yeah. And is it, does it correlate to that 102, 175? Correlates to no line? No. no. Empty line. Uh, but that's fine. Um, move somewhere else. What's anybody else want to talk about? I would like our town reports updated on the website. I would too. What do you, I didn't hear what you said about I'd like our town reports updated on the website. Um, one thing that's a, a bit more of a global conversation for our budget is which I put out an email, I think, um, how do we show the ARPA money going into the general fund budget so that we end up with a year in surplus? And I, I talked with Rosemary and Tom a little bit, and I, you know, maybe a clean way to do it would be to have Rosemary issue a check to the Memorial Fiber Net for 50 grand. So that takes that right out of it. Yeah. And then the 46.5 that we earmarked for Mumley, we can show in estimated year end expense to select board contracted services or, or they could whatever. invoice it. <coughs> or they could invoice it conceivably. Yeah. Um, but, but the bottom line is I think we need to get a revenue in on the ARPA money. And then a proposed amount of how to how to apply that surplus. It, when's the deadline for that to be accomplished? Well, the actual deadline for that is going to be after we have town meeting. You know, it's going to be June thirtieth, really. Um, according to ARPA, is according to ARPA, you have to commit by twenty four and spend by 26. So we have to commit in the next week. Well, we already did commit. We committed yeah. to apply the ARPA funds to reduce the budget. Right, but we need to show that that's actually happened. Yes. We do, we that's my show. point. That's yes. what I was concerned yeah. about too, is that we're, we, we've we said we're, we've said we're gonna do it, but we haven't shown that we we're going to do it. We haven't shown that we're gonna so, do and it. And that needs to happen this week. It does. This week. Yeah. So when you talk to Rosemary, are those the only two that you talked about, or did you talk about What's left over after those two? You wouldn't be writing big check back to ARPA. Well, that'll make you blood pressure. Hopefully, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I guess we can talk with Rosemary to figure out what she thinks the best way to deal with the, the two items that we have already committed to. To me, the simple thing is issue a check to the CUD for 50 grand and then roll the rest of it into our budget and we can show the expense to Mumley under estimated year-end expenses for contracted services. Did we already issue a check for them? The 50? Mumley? Well, Tom said at the next meeting he was going to have a lot of their invoices to discuss. For Mumley? No, oh, I'm sorry, not Mumley, for the CD. CD. No. Uh, as far as I know, we have not issued a check. Somebody asked for it. I thought he came in Paul was right here. And he did, but he after that, it. like after that, I think they've since asked for it. Um, okay. Well, if the check has been written, then that, that, that takes care of that. That's still needs to be shown under But that's paper. something that Tom can do for us. <clears throat> yes. It should be here. Expense. I know we got a report from Lisa Barron here. I didn't look at it close enough to see whether or not they I had. thought they had asked for it for by a certain time. Maybe I'm wrong. He did send us an update, a CUD update. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't read it close enough to know whether. Yeah, okay. It, it didn't have that time. number. 
But bottom line is I think I think we need to one thing that needs to go into our budget is to be able to show that we're going to end up with a general fund surplus. So with, that we apply the ARPA to the budget and we're going to show a general fund surplus. At yeah. the end. And we need to do it next week. Next week. Well, it needs to be done in the context of the budget. Yeah. Right. I mean, so by the time we approve the budget, it, it should be rolled into those figures. When are we planning on approving this budget? What's our? It won't be until before, sometime in January. At this point, of January, the yeah. middle of January. I mean, we. I think we need to <coughs> sign it. But Either the sixteenth or the eighteenth, one of the two. Right, days. because it, in order for it to get into the town report, mm -hmm. it has to go through a review. It has to, like, meaning we have to have it checked by Sue. Usually does it. A couple people usually do it. I, honestly, I usually check all the links to I suspect all of us will do that this year. Um, Sue will review it and somebody else touches it too. Yeah, so you know by the 20, 20, 20th or 21st or so we should it should be in Rosemary's hands. I think it needs to be in Rosemary's hands before then. Yeah I do too. I think the 14th because they uh oh, I think the week of the the fourteenth of January that week, by the end of that week, we need to be done with everything. Like we are check, meaning Sue has approved it, has reviewed and approved. So I think our goal should be to get it to Sue by the seventeenth, at the latest. So where are our meetings? Are we meeting on the first? Okay, I think Tom implied we were meeting the eighth, but we're scheduled for the first and the fifteenth. Uh, I think we should meet the week of the first. You, should, you think we should have a meeting over the first? Yeah, I think we should be on Tuesday or after the calendar. Yeah. yeah, I think we should be on Tuesday. That would work well, actually. The second? Yeah, that's that's the one day of the week that I can do it. You can. It's the I one day you can do it. Yeah. If it's normal meeting time, that works great. How about you, Evan? If you have a call, don't worry about me. So does that mean you can't make it? I'm pretty sure I can. But like, so sure you can. Now. Can. can. <clears throat> so far, you're so far behind. Huh? You're so far behind at work. Yeah, so we need to actually come out of the next budget meeting. Uh, I think Tom needs to be told how important like back squared away is, because that's a lot of outlying stuff. He still has notes on the library. <coughs> um, <coughs> revenue, they need to be squared away. I, you know, my only comment on on um, meeting the second is if you factor in the basic holidays and the fact that <coughs> he's been sick and got sick kids, um, is he really going to have time to, is it going to be an exercise in frustration for us if we get here on the second and <coughs> well, we can, he really has be fluid on it too. Yeah. No, we need to pick a date now. Okay. Fluid, like water. <laughs> was that fun? It, it, took, it took me three days to recover from staying up all night with you on Monday. <laughs> was just, you're so young. I was just in rash. So, okay, so what are we, what are you, what are you saying, Evan? Um, I don't think that Duncan was the one that asked. He was but, concerned. I was just a little bit concerned. If we meet on the second, is that going to give Tom enough time to get these? Because the last few remaining. Well, at the very least, we can get dig into the highway budget with Jason. Even right. if we don't have to do it this year, because we haven't done highway. I don't remember you did highway once. You did not. Jason hasn't been to a meeting. 
on budget. We were going to on Monday, but it rained. Well, I, I remember Tom saying where he and Jason had met. Yeah, the six they had sat down, yeah. Like the guys, the guys uh, six summer. thirty meeting? Or yeah. six. On the second. It's a regular meeting, just moved out of day. I know, just checking. So. And the eighth as well, am my understanding, or no? The fifth, well, I don't know. Is the eighth going to be on uh, regular? Going to postpone the, the first meeting and change that to the eighth? No, our first one is postponed to the second. The eighth would be an extra meeting. And I think the eighth would be an extra if we need it. If we need it. Um, I guess I I'm asking if we need be it. be going out of town. When? The week of the eighth. I'm out of town on the 10th or so the 15th, for whatever. Um, <clears throat> I think I might be going to, for work out of town for the 7th to the 11th. Going to Philadelphia by any chance? No. Uh, so just FYI, I, I don't know for sure. I need to, they've asked me to go. Okay, well, I, if we don't need the meeting, we don't need the meeting anyways, but. Well, my hesitation is that I'm not convinced we don't need it. Yeah. Especially if we're going to. I think something. there's a lot we still need to get done. So if the second is going to be our regular meeting, that's going to mean we're going to do all of the regular stuff, too? No, we're only going to do the regular stuff that we have to do. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing regular that lands on a meeting until our budget's resolved that doesn't have a deadline. If there's a deadline, okay, fine. But if there's not a deadline, we're pushing it. Okay. So do we make any decisions on meeting on the 8th or the week of the 8th? <coughs> um, did not make decisions. Maybe we can actually address it on the 2nd, see how far we get the 2nd. Yeah, I probably can. I it would be good to hear from Rosemary about what's, what's our drop dead date for having something to you. <coughs> I think she did give us a general idea, and it was around, I think it was around the, like, middle of the month. I, I, I want to say she was saying, yeah. like, the 15th to 20th range. Mm -hmm. um, I think she did. Yeah. January has five Mondays, so we can meet three times. Oh, we could meet five times. We could meet five times. <laughs> <laughs> Why limit it? We can meet on, we can meet on, uh, on, on New Year's Day. That's true. We haven't even talked about articles. You got any ideas? Well, I certainly do. What about yourself? I know. There's some uh, maybe percolating out there, but I don't know if anyone's going to get any together. I mean, there are some articles that are pretty standard. Right. There, really usually help there are certainly some pretty standard articles. I do believe the Mason's Lodge tax exemption article is due sure. this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but somebody should check a conversation on tax exemption for NEMS. I'm not sure if we want to have that or if their budgeted figure incorporates them paying tax. I had a conversation with Scott Griswold um, because I, I wanted to know the same yeah. answer. And as hard as I looked, I actually called the LCT and asked if there was a, a special exemption for ambulance buildings. And they said no, but I could have sworn years ago that there was a special exemption and it exempted you from the school tax as well as the local tax. But I noticed in the statute it says a couple of the exemptions have been repealed. That might have been one of them. Bottom line is right now the state tax would still be due, so NEMS has included the tax bill in their total budget to us, to everybody. And it's so we would be paying. So it's thirty nine point three percent of the tax bill. Right. But with how our budget looks this year, understanding it would save us money if we exempt them from taxes. I don't we think it will. I think it will because of our the percentage that we pay of the school tax. Uh, I I we, looked at it and if we pay thirty nine point nine percent of seventy eight hundred dollars, I think that's still less than 
well, we would lose an income from tax here. Seventy eight hundred their full tax bill. Seventy eight hundred is their full tax bill. I did the oh. math, but I don't think I did it on thirty nine percent. Is that our percentage with them? Yeah, thirty nine point three percent, and that's their tax bill. Any other articles coming to citizen articles? Does the board want to consider uh, having an article for making the town treasurer, town clerk, an appointed position <coughs> versus an elected position? What's the um, the timing of all this in Rosemary as well? Rosemary's done in two town meetings, right? I believe so. so that I mean, that's what she expressed as her interest. She won't run for re-election in the spring of 25. Yeah. Do you want to wait until the last year no, to I find don't, out? I don't want to wait until last year. Do you want to wait until the second to last year to find out if the voters approve it? Which is, which is this kind So of it, bring, it brings us to right now. Yeah. No, that's why I was asking the question I was asking. Don't trust me. I trust you. You're killing me. It's, it's a good question. Uh, my suggestions we ask Rosemary. Yeah, yeah. If because if, if if she supports it, it's gonna happen. The voters will say, yes, sounds good to me. Um, and if on the other hand she gets up and <clears throat> says, well, I don't know. And you know somebody's gonna ask. Somebody's gonna say, well Rosemary, what do you think? Yeah. And if she gets up and is anything less <laughs> than supportive. Well, she, she'll be less than supportive because whatever she does, she'll be very soft and spoken. But if she says it's, I, a, it's a good idea for the town, I fully support uh, asking her opinion on it. But we need to consider it. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And we need to maybe flesh out the details. Of what and I, I don't know what an appointed position actually means. Does it mean we can right now she whoever's town clerk has to live in the town? It's because it's an elected position. Because yeah. it's an elected position. It removes all of those it removes we can hire anybody we, want. we can hire anybody we want. Could I hire somebody from we can appoint ourselves? Yeah. We could have somebody do it remotely. Out of the country. Probably could, yeah. We could. So contracted to India. Are you content that? Huh? Yep. Okay, so are we adjourning? We have more to do, Beth? Um, um, to answer your question, yes, a lot. I know that. The question is tonight. Really tonight. <laughs> I, think, I think we made some progress, though. So. Yeah, we made the number go up. Yeah. <laughs> Good work, Evan. Yeah, broken link. But it's still not as bad. Fix the it's still Great not work. as bad as yeah, 15 minutes all those have a major project taxes go up for sure. Thank God for the argument. And all the interest you're earning for us with that. <laughs> it's not floating the boat yet, Mike. Another thing that would be really nice to know, and we probably aren't going to know yeah, it, is whether or not we get the EDA grant before. That would be before the 14th of January. Before we had, yeah. We're I mean, not going to get it before then. They're still asking questions. It's with the EDA <coughs> yeah. person. She hasn't pushed it out yet. She asked for a meeting next week. Oh, really? So. So the likelihood of us knowing by the time we go across is not good. Slim to yeah. none. Yeah. Okay. Shall I move with that we adjourn? I would second the motion, but some people don't think we need a motion to adjourn. I'll stand, third the stand, unnecessary stand motion. Stand in report. Adjourned. Adjourned.